In the end of 59 and finished in January 1960, I composed poem for chairs, tables, and benches, etc., which is a work that um, is even more involved with my own approach to time structure in that the work can be any duration, but um, the sounds um, are the sounds of uh, chairs, tables, and benches, and really anything that can be dragged across a floor with an emphasis on getting a really good sound. When I saw Lamont Young's word pieces, then I, I began to imitate them and, and around that time, I don't know exactly, yes, I think it was after I saw Lamont's word pieces, um, I did a, a piece in which you had um, a human performer and an orchestra that was supposed to be monkeys who were given toy instruments and they were all in a cage and the human performer was banging on a kitchen sink with a pipe. And Lamont knew of that piece and that's when he wanted to do a piece with many repetitions and so he called it 566 for Henry Flynn because of my piece because of banging the, the, the sink with a pipe. I did the piece in April 1960 and it grew out of an improvisation uh, that I was doing with the Ann Halpern Dance Company in California. Um, later, I titled it, and the correct title is Arabic numeral, any integer to Henry Flint. Then, uh, when you put it on a program, you determine the number of strokes that you're going to do. Then it goes from there into Flux's festivals. And this is how Machunas used the chart to see the flow of things, the kind of the flowing down. Some things lead off to uh, sort of periphery or to dead ends, he might feel. But with Flux's, these two series you can see lead right into the Flux's festivals. Here he's saying that his series leads right in, but you could equally say that the series at Yoko's Loft leads right into the uh, um, Flux's festivals, which, uh, um, as you probably uh, already discussed, started in Wuppertal in 62 and then went on to Dusseldorf, Paris, uh, Wiesbaden, Copenhagen, and so on. George Machunas was sort of trying to get involved in the avant-garde in New York in early 1961. And he had an art gallery on Madison Avenue. And he met Lamont Young and Jackson McLow. And he was doing series of evenings in his art gallery on Madison Avenue. And there was a series that was um, uh, Lamont Young and, and Jackson McLow chose the people who were in the series. They produced it. I guess that's what you would say. They, they were the producers. At the time that George Junis met me, um, he was a very nice person, you know, and he was very helpful to me when I was starving. He would give me food. George didn't know anything about what was going on in art or uh, music or anything. He just was, had totally conventional ideas. Then he had to leave for Europe and uh, the anthology, I mean, you know, <laughs> here we have Jackson Michelot standing right here. I, um. Then the next thing we heard at the end of the year, at least I did, I think other people had other kinds of things, uh, were that we were all uh, editors of something called Fluxus, which was first projected as a series of anthologies, I think modeled probably upon Lamont's anthology. and. Uh, but, so, uh, I've forgotten who was what, but I was first appointed literary editor, and then in a later version of his lists, he, I was the poetry editor. And so, during 62 and 63, he had a number of, he began to have uh, concerts, festivals, as he called them, Fuchs's festivals, beginning with Wiesbaden.
I remember that uh, <coughs> that Ben Patterson and I were uh, uh, doing a piece of his. I forget the title now, but it involved a ladder, and on this ladder there were steaming tea kettles, and on the spouts to the tea kettles there were balloons which were swelling up, and we had started practicing dart throwing in, in connection with a piece by a Japanese composer, composer Ishiyanagi, and he throw the darts into the backboard of a piano, and the sound was startling. But in this particular piece, we would wait until the balloons uh, uh, expanded and then we would pop the balloons and there would be a pop, you know. And, and uh, there were some very provocative, slow performances. Not all Flux's pieces are short. Some of them are very, very provocative in terms of time. I would say Fluxus is, a mo is often, at least the early Fluxus, very focused on time. Sometimes the pieces are extremely short and sometimes extremely long. And at the Copenhagen Fluxus, there were both kinds were represented. I remember one long section where Emmett Williams and Eric Anderson were on the stage, each waiting for the other to move. Nobody moved. And after about 45 minutes, mysteriously, the performance ended. But of course, theoretically, it could have gone on till now. I found myself with the second performance of Make a Salad, uh, confronted with all these angry Danes especially angry was the head of the uh, music school who had actually funded the vegetables for the salad probably thinking I was going to make something in a little bowl <laughs> and instead uh, I, pre I prepared salad for hundreds of people. I found the, the, the Copenhagen audience pretty nice after say what happened in East Baden where people hated this and then, uh, put signs up, you know, they went over our posters and would send them to the nut house, you know, and they, they really were, were hostile. Of course, a piece like that is hard for any audience at that time because to consider making the salad to be a work of art is simply not a perception that most people are ready for. We were going to try to do my good print piece, which I called Lick. Uh, I don't know if you know, it's a very simple score. It says just cover a shapely woman nude with whipped cream. And then the next instruction is Lick. <laughs> And uh, Adi Kopka had managed to get the Danish Dairy Association to donate gallons and gallons of whipped cream. And uh, then he thought he had somebody organized to be the woman. And then she began to think about it and said no. And I remember the whole day, you know, he goes through all of the friends, and then he goes through his little black book, and <laughs> he starts calling all the other numbers, and even the <coughs> prostitutes said no, which I thought was very strange, because Copenhagen in those days it was supposed to be the wide open city of Europe. Uh, so we didn't manage to do it there. <laughs> the time that these pieces appeared is so vastly different from the times we're in now, that you, 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 you will not, the concept of audience which we have now was very different from what it was then. Uh, so for us, it's extremely interesting to see how these very simple works, minimal works, uh, reflect the audience as well as ourselves. Street, where in 1967 George established the first cooperative, which was the beginning of Soho. Now, George, the Cinematheque, to make a Cinematheque, was to the ground floor and the basement. But also, George lived for uh, between 67 and uh, 80, 77, in fact, for 10 years, he lived in the basement here also, did all his work. This was the, this is the, was the Fluxus 
this tree that you're seeing, I mean, that tree there, George planted them. They were tiny, tiny little trees where they grew up, as you can see. And the police and the city people came in the morning and they said, oh, it's forbidden to have trees on this street. It's industrial street. And George said, if you don't like them, you uproot them yourself. I'm not going to do. You uproot it yourself. And they, they, they went and they never came back. And the trees are here. It's based on a work that Brecht had done in the 50s, 1959, called Valor, which is uh, uh, French slang for uh, travel, a thing that, like what you pack, a backpack, or what you carry with you when you go traveling. And it was a work that Machunas became fascinated with, and there went through different forms, um, usually after the initial ones came in an antique box. And uh, it, it, in a metaphoric sense, is perhaps what you would travel with to another world, either to a world of your childhood or a world after death. So it, it contains things that are round, um, things that are wooden, this is driftwood, which you might find at the beach, uh, children's things, toys, uh, that sort of top, another kind of top that would spin, a toy snake. It's a, a fluxus work by George Brecht, but George Brecht gave the idea over to Machunas to realize, not in the sense of the old uh, uh, master artist um, doing a design for a printmaker to realize, but in trusting Machunas to uh, realize the work. And uh, so that what is here uh, might be what Brecht would have put in, but it might be quite different. One of the ideas behind Fluxus was to, to try to get away from the individualism um, that was prevalent in the Arab world at the time and, and towards uh, uh, an, uh, collectivism and an, an, an anonymity of authorship to an experience, just to the experience itself. And that's demonstrated here a little bit by the idea that Machunas is making Brecht's work. I don't consider it an art form. I, there's no aim to it, there's no purpose, it doesn't have a function, it's not convincing anybody, it's not trying to gain ground, it's not trying to become a success or to change the world. It, uh, it just takes place. Total chaos, total order, total, uh, total disorder, total um, uh, freedom, or uh, random, everything can happen, and, you know, uh, and, and the other extreme. Fluxus minimalism, a kind of essentialism, non-objectified. And 
If you go to a museum, you have seen it all before, huh? isn't it? I mean, any museum, and I don't go to museums much, but any museum I enter, I see the same shit everywhere. It's like, it's like uh, as if I go into McDonald's. I know exactly what I'm going to get. We had all of this uh, painting would disappear, and ballet would disappear, and so forth and so on. But it, I mean, it was kind of a, an attempt to combine the, um, <laughs> you know, <laughs> this is almost yeah, like, this is no, like, we're, this we're, is your life, you know, <laughs> and now, now you're, Ben is walking up, just as I'm about to mention you. Luxus contains attitude. That is to say, we don't only produce objects like uh, uh, bronzes or armands or, or new realism or pop art produces objects. We have an attitude towards art. Hello, Eric. <laughs> We have an attitude towards art, and that attitude is in, let's say, I decide on um, not being an artist, or suiciding, or drinking, or not even drinking, or, or we, we look at art and then we try to change our mind towards it. It seems that everything that art touches dies. February 11, 1978. To be aware of approaching death is one thing. To accept death is another thing. But George has accepted living with death in a perfect fluxus spirit. Uh, he has been used to death all his life. He says he's so full of medicine and drugs and cortisone that the bugs do not bite him. And those bugs that bite him drop dead immediately. Already in 1960, doctors gave him only a few months to live, but he's still around, George, doing his art. George is not using his body to make art. There isn't much of it left. There never was. He's using his life 